Well, the smithy was created by my great grandfather when he came from Wick in Caithness in 1862, and he built the house in the, in the smithy, and uh, he had. Uh, in 1861, he came across for the winter of 61 and the winter of 62 to see what like this was, because there's two farmers from this parish that went across to see if they could get a blacksmith in the island. And they managed to get hold of him, and he came across to see what like it would be. So. What he thought was a great thing here at that time was the education at Thomason's Academy, which was a heat of education in Caithness at that period. This is Darrow Gilmore, my apprentice, and he's here learning all classes of jobs and he's very busy making scrolls and fancy work. Grandfather, the first blacksmith, came from Wick and Caithness in 1862, and that's him and his wife at the time of their golden wedding, in 1912. That's the ploughs, the early type of ploughs for the Highland Garan, the suit Highland Garan horse, that's what it was made for, and that's the quern stones. That's over there for grinding the mill, meal. And that's a uh, whiskey pigs. You see them there? That's what I call a litter pig. <laughs> the smithy was a great gathering place for the farmers, especially on a of course, rainy, windy day, there was a great day for horseshoeing, and they seemed to almost crowd at the smithy with a day like that, and especially at night time, again, it was the same thing because they had socks to get trimmed and cutters to get for their ploughs to get trimmed and various things besides. And this is called blacksmith's beer. And I captured this recipe out of a book of blacksmithing that was published in Philadelphia. And this beer was designed by the students of the College of Arts of Blacksmiths in Philadelphia for their annual seminar for the principal of the college. And as it happened away in 1975 when I got this book, I started making it and I've made it ever since. That song is compiled by a gentleman from Strathpeffer, a specialist in taking music out of anything. But it happened to be that a friend of mine belonging to the council, Mr. Culligan, was here, and I told him about this, and he got this gentleman from Strathpeffer called Bob Pibb, this is his name, and he had never heard of the like of music taken out of envelopes. So he came up here with his Alice equipment and we tapped this soon around the anvils, which I'll demonstrate.
to circle his book. It was in the library and kept on it was sold out long ago. Then he was escorted up before Her Majesty and you had the bow and then she spoke to you and, and uh, questioned you and that and then she hung the, the MBE finger on you. We got that past and then she and said to you, said to me that I'll be retired. So I says, I have no intentions of retiring your majesty. So I'm fully occupied. So what is your uh, most common thing that you're doing now? So I says, I make silver horseshoes for weddings. I never heard of the like. Well, I says, that's the case. In fact, I could show your horses with silver horseshoes, your majesty. <laughs> It was just polished on that. So I made the shoe and I contacted the Lord Lieutenant, Tony Truckett, for he's the chief boy for Her Majesty. So he got an awful surprise when I contacted him about the leg because he says, How the hell he says you ever thought of doing the leg? at such an appropriate time for her diamond jubilee and to get a diamond set in the door. He says, I can't understand how you ever thought on the light. I'll just be delighted, he says, to assist you. However, it was, I got a very nice letter back for the Queen, which you can see. So that was that, but it was very exciting at the time for the, Think on the leg and do the leg. <laughs>